praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome to Personal Touch International Ministry Wednesday evening Bible study. Amen. 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 We're here again. We're here again believing God, trusting the Lord, trusting in the word that he's given this house. Amen. To operate and function in. So we just say, tell a friend, tell a family member, and tell your foes, tell your enemies that we're up and, and live. Amen. And share this video. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you again for this new day that you've made. We thank you, Father God, for protecting us and keeping us from all danger, hurt, harm, and danger, oh God, danger to see and unseen. We thank you, Father God, for allowing us to be a part of this moment in time right now in the name of Jesus. This is our Wednesday evening Bible study, Lord, and as always, we say welcome, welcome, welcome. You are welcome, O oh God, to speak from your heart through my mouth. You're welcome, O oh God, to move by your spirit. You're welcome to do all of what God does. However you want to do it, Lord God, I will so say yes to your will and yes to your way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 We're going to uh, try not to be too long this tonight. We're going to get in this box right there. <laughs> We're going to talk about the peril, the peril, P E R I L, of an empty heart brings in spiritual emptiness. Okay? The peril of an empty heart brings in spiritual emptiness. And you know, we've been talking, we talk about spirituality a lot, amen. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, if you are a thorough listener or a keen listener, you will begin to understand why we speak in that manner in this house. Because the word of God is spirit, and it's for the spirit man that's in us. Amen? It's not for the flesh, and it's not to enjoy, and it's not to jump around and shout and all that stuff in your flesh. And you can jump and shout and praise God in spirit and in truth. That's different, okay? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it's designed to give us the, the, the leniency that God has given us through his son, Jesus, for us to understand what he requires from us. Amen? I'm going to try to just take this exactly off this paper as we typed it up today. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that way I won't go off without it. Because I, like, I always like to be able to say everything that I put on paper. But then again, I know everything I'm not going to be able to say. You know, but I, I try. I really try. <laughs> the peril of an empty heart brings in spiritual emptiness. What is your, I'm going to ask the question first. What is your mindset or your, your, your terminology or definition of spiritual emptiness? Reject the word. 
And it's the word that brings us into spirituality. Amen. It's the word of God that brings us into the spirituality where God sets us up to begin to communicate with him, to live for him, to love him, to be able to respond to him and do what he wants us to do. Amen. In the earth realm. Amen. I thought I saw your hand jump up and stuff. So we start out by saying when we were born in this world, we were born in sin, spiritually unconscious and dead to the will of God, his righteousness and his way. This was because we were wrapped in sin and its nature, shaking its iniquity and in, our, and in sin did our mothers conceive us. We know that's in Psalms 51, 5, right? Okay, so therefore, we have to come to that conclusion that we were once sinners. We were once in sin, and we were once wrongdoers, evil, wickedness was in our imagination and in our thoughts, and we have to come to the conclusion of that, you know? And, and that that is what really helps, helps us in being ushered into salvation, is becoming aware that I am and I need a savior. I am in a wretch and I need a savior, amen? I need a Lord and savior because the world is not doing me no good. The things of the world, the cares of the world are not doing me any good. And that, again, and that is your spiritual awakening right there, beginning right there when that awareness takes place. Because we have to become aware that we are wrong. And I talk to people, many people, and they, they, they don't have the conscious awareness of knowing, I'm talking about C-O-N-S-C-I-E-N-C-E -E -E this time, the conscious awareness of knowing that they are wrong or they won't accept it more. You know, it, it's, it's always an excuse. I was born like this, or I was born in this family, or this is the way I was raised, or I didn't have this, and I, you know, it's excuse after excuse after excuse. It's never that I'm just wrong. You know, I'm just wrong. I'm in a bad place. I'm not in Christ. I don't know the Lord, and I need him. So we're talking about the peril of an empty heart brings in spiritual emptiness. The word peril, P-E-R-I-L, means exposure to the risk, R-I-S-K, of being injured, destroyed, or lost. Now, were we not there? Were we not in the situations like that before we, we the Lord began to attract us and draw us into him? We were in peril. And we were empty. We were spiritually empty before we heard the word of God and began to say, yes, I like that. Yes, I need that. Yes, you know, yes, Lord. You know, we, we, before we, be, we were empty. Mm -hmm. So peril means exposure to the risk of being injured, destroyed, or lost. And being in the world without Christ Jesus, we all of that and then some. Yeah. So some natural examples of peril include, you know, falling, falling down, illnesses or sicknesses that are near death, financial loss, crashing your car. But see, the carnal mind, the natural mind, wants to think on this line of peril. It don't want to look at the fact that I'm not, I'm spiritually empty. Because a lot of people have not accepted the fact that they're not where they say they are in Christ. They're in total denial there. Because I can, I can have stammering tongues. I have a little, little tongue, but you don't have a language. But I have a babbling sound that's coming out of my mouth. It's not a language. And I say that because the more the stammering of the tongues begin and the babbling begins, that's where God is bringing you into him to give you your language to talk to him. And many don't never make it to that point. They're stopping the da 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 You know, and then as they listen to people and and watch people, they'll go and try to add the other part about they're gonna get a Honda. Yeah, become a Honda and all that kind of stuff, you know, call that speaking in tongues. But the thing is, we have to understand God got this thing called salvation position and set so precise in him 
that you're going to have to do it his way. Yep. You can't do it no other way. You can't add anything to the process, and you definitely can't take anything away. Mm -hmm. Only thing you can do is surrender when you enter into his design plan for mankind. Surrender your will. Surrender your whole self. That's the best thing to do. Because God has the layout. He has the blueprint. He has the this for everything pertaining to you and I. So we, you know, we're not, to, we don't peril the natural examples, you know, earthquake, volcano eruptions and stuff like that. To some me, to sue me. Tsunami. Tsunami. Thank you. Objects falling and stuff. Buildings falling because the earth, you know, we know about that type of peril. Even people going hungry, we know about that type of peril. But we need to get more in tune with our spiritual emptiness. The perils of that, because see, if I die and leave this world when God finishes his work in me, whether I die of death or whether I die in for eternal life, I need to make sure my, my ducks are in order. My soul is right with God. My work now here in the earth is going to make allow God to say, well done, thy good and perfect servant. I, I, I'm pleased with you. Come on in. Amen. Or depart from me because I don't know you. Your work was of iniquity. And that's why I said we're so worried about the rapture and the end times. We need to be concerned about the emptiness that's in us. Because, see, you can gain knowledge and gain knowledge until your head get big as all get out. But your heart has never been changed or replaced by the Spirit of God. Your heart has never been touched by Him. He's never replaced your heart of stone to give you a heart of flesh. And we have to understand that this is what it's going to take. God don't have a different avenue. Everybody has to come through the door. Jesus says, if you come in any other way, he said, you're considered as a thief and a robber. We got lots of thieves and robbers in salvation. Amen. We do. And those are people that are saying, hey, I got this thing. Hey, I'm in the will of God. Hey, you know, watch me. Look at me. I'm prophesying. I'm preaching. I'm doing this. But I got, they, they're empty. Empty. They don't have no fruit. Are there any questions, any comments? No? Good. She's going to try to hold me to my word. Or I say, well, I'm not going to be that long. She's going to be like, I'm not going to say nothing. <laughs> but we're talking about the peril of your heart's emptiness that brings in spiritual emptiness. Salvation is all about spirituality. That's, the, that's one thought I say, man, since it's the most of time. I, I, I see, when you look across the board, I see there is no holiness, there is no righteousness, there is no spirituality. Everybody is doing what they want to do. And then you got those lookers and seekers that's looking for something different, looking for something to feel better. So they're watching each other, and then they're taking on this same process. But it's not spiritual. It has no spirituality to it. But it's all about the awakening of your soul, the spirit man in you to bring him back to reconciliation with God, his father. It's all about converting, converting soul to being transformed into the newness of the son, just as Jesus Christ portrayed and demonstrated in the earth according to the word of God. It's the word that's going to do it. Hearsay, tradition and religion, you know, my mama did this, my mama said that, my daddy acted like this, well, this is the way my whole family, that's not going to cut it. It's not going to cut it at all. I can't, you can't ride off of my salvation. You got to have your own. You know what I'm saying? We, we got to come to that knowledge of knowing that. And that's why everybody goes, family, family's everything. No, it's not. When it comes down to salvation, no, it's not. Because salvation is individual and personal. You've got to give an account of your own self, yep. your own deeds, your own wrongdoings. And family can't pray you out of that thing either. Oh, no, because you've got to come to the conclusion of the whole matter. you either going to serve God or you're going to serve the devil. You 
can't change people's mind. Again, you know the old old cliche of the horse in the water. You can bring the horse to the water, but you can't make him drink. You can even bring the water to the horse. If the horse ain't thirsty, he's not going to drink. Same with the word of God. If the person don't want salvation, they're going to reject salvation. If the person don't want to hear about God, or don't want to hear about the things of God, they're going to close up their ears. They're going to come to a, have a deaf ear in hearing. They don't want it. And but the time will come when they will need it. Amen. So we, as, we all as born again believers must possess the mind of Christ, the spirit of Christ, the fruit of the spirit, the humility of Christ, the obedience of Christ, the will of Christ. Amen. And condemn sin in our flesh like Christ did. Amen. Without sinning. You know, such things, getting in sin and doing stuff, and you don't, oh, I'll just repent. No. Grace is not going to keep covering you. It's not going to cover you like that. I think Elder mentioned this Sunday school about when you come, when you sin, and it talks about it in Hebrews. When you come into the, the knowledge or when you come, when you begin to taste the righteousness of God, and the holy things of God. Your repentance days is just is over. You're not going to be running up in and out of there talking about, oh, I'm sorry, Lord. I went out and fornicated, but I was just in need. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. It don't work like that. When you know I'm only human, it don't work like that. The peril of an empty heart brings in spiritual emptiness because everything begins in the heart. It's not in your intellect. It's not in your imagination. Well, the imagination of the thoughts of the heart, that's in the heart. But it's not, you're not going to imagine this thing and just do it. You know what I'm saying? You're not, you're going to, you're going to need the word of God. You're going to need Christ Jesus. And you're going to need a preacher also. Because the Bible says, how can you hear without a preacher? So you're going to need a preacher also. So Romans 8 and 3, we're going to be dipping in and out of Romans 8 and 3, amen? That's going to be our governing uh, chapter. So we know that it is the heart of man, it's in the heart of man that his destiny lies. The destiny, plans, purpose, thoughts, imaginations, and all of his issues of life, life is in the heart. Isn't that something? You nasty rascal, that's in your heart. You kind-hearted individual, that's in the heart. You gentle and understanding person, that's in the heart. But you unclean, nasty, foul-mouthed person, that's in the heart. Yeah. You evil-thinking person, always got evil coming out of your mouth, that's in the heart. These things are in the heart of a person. And see, and I thank God that Jesus, the physician, came in to let us know that. And he didn't have to do no operations to tell us. He didn't have to put us on no couch to psychoanalyze us. He didn't have to draw no blood to tell us that evil thoughts and imaginations are in the heart. And that's something that was free. You didn't have to go to no doctor for that. Well, doctor, I'm happy. <laughs> But Doc, I'm, I'm having these here bad thoughts, and I'm having, I feel like I want to kill somebody. Oh, well, okay, then, well, murdering is in the heart. <laughs> Jesus has already told us that. Why do you need to go to a doctor for him to give you medicine for that? I told, I t keep telling you, sin, there is no medication for sin. There's no prescription for it. And the doctors don't have any treatment for sin. But it's in the heart. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Everything about you is in your heart. Everything about me is in my heart. So keep yourself. This is a command in the word of God to do so. This is your responsibility. Once you enter into God's plan of salvation and you accept God's terms, for processing you. This is your responsibility to keep your heart now. When he gives you a new heart, that's up to you. And you definitely going to need the Holy Ghost. So that way you can have the power and the ability to do so. 
So we know that as born again believers in Christ, you must have a new heart replaced by God. You ain't gonna get it no other way. Amen. No heart transplant in the natural. This is a spiritual heart transplant. Amen. Not your morally good or your suppression and repression of your sin and wrongdoing. That, that's not going to work. Everyone, I know I can do it. I know I can stop. I know I can stop. Uh-uh, that ain't going to work for you. You can say it 959,000 times, 100,000 times, and you're not going to be cured. You need the new heart. We need, oh, I'm just not going to hang around these people no more. I'm not, no, 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 no. You still going to need the new heart, the new heart of flesh that God, only God can replace and give you. Amen. 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 It, it's just, I don't care what we do. Because, see, man always loves to slip and slide. Mankind loves to try and go through the back door. Yeah. You know, racism is over, but they, his sneakiness is not. His motive is always the opposite of God's intent. And he wants to do things his way because of the knowledge of good and evil. And say, well, okay, then God, you want this done. Well, I'm going to go this route and do it. But God said, no, you go straight and do it. Okay, but I'm going to do it this way. And it'll be the same result. That's what you say. Because, see, we're dealing with God, the Father, God, our creator, the one that knows us. He knows our ups and downs. He knows our downsetting. He knows whether we're going to get up the next day. Yes, ma'am. And I think the reason why we have to go the way that God tells us to go is because, like you always say, he's already prepared that path. He already mm -hmm. saw into the future for that path. Yeah. So if we try to take our own way, who knows where that way is going to lead. I'm trying to tell you. It's just best to follow the path that he said. It's always better to do it God's way. Always. Because see, when we do veer the least little bit, a little hair, hair nail or, or, or what you call them thing, hang nail, whatever, <laughs> from the will of God. I'm telling you, that's how thin, that's how tight this thing is. Yeah. And that, that ain't even really tight. I'm just using that as an example. But it's tight. Because the devil is waiting on any opportunity for you to slip and get back on that wrong path because condemnation comes in. He comes in to remind you of your past. He comes in to tell you God don't love you. He comes in to tell you, see, you wasn't going to do that no way. You can't even do it the way God wanted it done. All kinds of mess comes. We wait on it. He passed sneaky. He don't even try to be sneaky no more. <laughs> the devil don't try to be sneaky. He not sneaky. That's not one of his character traits. Subtle, deceitful, you know, influencer, tempter. Those are his characteristics. Yeah, but so sneaky is not him. Subtle is not, subtle is not another word for sneaky. I don't think so. You can look it up, but I don't think so. Look it up. I feel subtle is like doing it. It's happening, but it's like doing it in small pieces. I feel like that's sneaky. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. He's not sneaky. Is, the, the devil really is not sneaky. I'm going to be honest like, with you. It's like somebody dropping something in your ear knowing it's going to cause chaos. But that's not sneaky. That to me so you let him get to your ear. That, if you let him get to your ear, that's not sneaky. He come right up on your ear with the talking and you with the listening. <laughs> <laughs> that's not sneaky. That's right. That's not sneaky. So nine times out of ten, you gonna respond to it. How is that sneaky? I'm serious. Think about it. That's not sneaky. Okay, I just thought maybe he was wrong. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. is especially of a change or a distinction. It says so delicate or precise as to be difficult to analyze or describe. He's coming to tell you something that's gonna throw you. Overboard. That's not sneaky. He let the devil will let you know he's coming. Huh? His are made mm -hmm. But he's coming and he hoping that he can say the right word, just the right word to get you to trip or flip. So we know that as born again believers in Christ, we must have a new heart replaced by God. Okay, this new heart of flesh comes fully equipped with the will of God, the way of God, the word of God, 
That is all his statutes, aka amen, his ordinances, and the ability to keep his judgments and do them. You can find that in Ezekiel 11, 19. Ezekiel 11, verses 19 through 20. And Ezekiel 36, verses 26 through 27. They basically say the same thing. But this is a spiritual process only done by God. And see, and one thing really bothers me about, about leaders especially, they always get up in front of me talking like, well, you know, we, we, we can only do so much. They, they, in other words, they take the word of God and they want to display the weakness, the human weakness of the word. And they forget all about the spiritual part of the word and the strength that comes with it. Because do you know your strength is within and it's not outward? Amen. Your strength is within. So that means you've got to be able to depend on the spiritual part of you to do stuff. You know, to think, to pull, to push, all those things. The body only goes into the motion of doing what you're desiring and thinking from the inside. It says, um, it says that when we are, when we are weak, that's when the strength of the Lord is the, the greatest. I know what you're talking yeah. about. In my weaknesses, the Lord is made strong. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, like I said, but, but according to the way they teach and stuff to, to the people, they're telling them, oh, it's okay to make an error. You can hear, and that's the subtle part right there, because you can hear that in what they're saying. Yeah, the Holy Ghost is powerful. The Holy Ghost gives you power. But you got to watch out now because you don't know who you might fail. Don't, don't lose focus. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute now. You just said the Holy Ghost was powerful. It's all power. Now, when we get the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost becomes the one in charge. And see, the error is when we don't allow him to possess and control us, and we still want to dip and dab into the knowledge of good and evil with him. That's where the problem is. But they teach and preach in such a subtle manner that it leaves loopholes. See, here we don't teach loopholes. We don't teach a way for you to find a loophole. If you find it, you better let me know because I can seal it up real quick for you. Get some command and put it on it. <laughs> Amen. But the thing is, we have to understand that God's word is the word. It is the word that will give you the power strength to do anything and everything. Why do you think Jesus said that if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain and tell it to be thou removed? Why do you think he said that? He didn't say that just to be making a, a note for people to chuckle with. But you've got to have that faith to believe in God, in Christ, in God, through Christ, to know that you have that kind of power. But you've got to have that kind of power that, and it has to agree with what God wants to do down here. So you can't just go loose lips and just trying to operate in the power and the will of God according to your feelings. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> according to your feelings and what you want for your family. It don't work like that. Mm -hmm. That's why God gives us the power. You know, some people, I, I can hear him, I can hear him, Lord. Well, you know, God gives us the, the power to bind and loose. Yeah, you're only going to bind and loose that which heaven has already approved. You ain't going to be the approving authority down here. Because God already knows loose lips, you're going to sink a lot of ships with that foolishness. And you know, he told what it was uh, John and somebody else, they had a spirit of vindictiveness. Because they wanted to call down fire from heaven because of the fact that some of the people did not accept them or believe like they believed in Jesus. 
And Jesus told him, do you know what spirit you are of? That's the spirit of vindictiveness. Why would you do that? So therefore, man has to have the total control, the total possession of the spirit of God to guide and lead him. And when I say him, I mean male and female. So that way, he don't go and do nothing outside of the will of God that will pertain to his will. And then think he gonna just ha 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 and chuck and shuck it off and shuck and jive with God. Oh God, you know I didn't mean no harm. Uh uh. I'm pretty sure those those disciples didn't mean no harm when they wanted to call down fire from heaven. But Jesus said, uh uh, that's the spirit of vindictiveness. So we have to watch the spirit that we're trying to operate in with all power. Because see, the spirit, and it tells you, it'll let you know that the, the, the spirit of God will let you know exactly where you are in him. And you come talking about, oh God, we want to see a great move of God tonight, and we know you're going to be in the building this time. Uh-uh. No, you're not. All that flesh up in there. Why would he come up in there with all that flesh? There's no humility. There's no oneness, oneness in mind. No one accord. Why would he come up in there? Okay, I'm still talking about the peril of an empty heart brings in spiritual emptiness. Amen. So when God gives you a gives you as a new creature in Christ a new heart, He will also give you the Holy Spirit that will dwell in you to be able to have all power to do His will in the knowledge of good and truth with no compromising. See, when God begins to come on board and possess you and control you, see, you're no longer operating in the knowledge of good and evil. So that's why I can't understand why people teach and preach like that. You're no longer able to operate that way. And if you are, you need to check who saved you. Because God don't make no mistakes. When God saves, God saves. I'm a witness to that. When he saves, you save. And you are delivered, and you're being delivered day by day. So as you walk in this world and going through the processes, dealing with people, he is protecting you. He's ordering your steps. He's telling you what to say. He's wording your mouth, your thoughts. God, I say yes, Lord. I didn't say. God, I thank you. He's not, you're not just running around there all loose like you were before without him. Wondering, what am I going to do? What am I supposed to say? How you want me to do all that? Uh-uh. I'm glad. I know one thing. I'm glad I ain't God because I get tired of people. <laughs> help me, Jesus. Lord, help me. I would get tired of him. You know he got to have patience to deal with all the people that he deal with on the level of where they are in their faith and belief in him. You know he got to have a lot of love. He's got God does not expect us to know the way that he's designed. He does not expect us to know his design plan of salvation. That's why tradition and religion has to be put in the trash. It has to be put in the garbage. Because when he calls you out of your darkness into his marvelous light, his plan is what goes into effect for you. Not nobody else's plan, his plan. Because see, we don't know the plan of God for our lives until we start getting to know him in relationship. Then he'll give you a glimpse here. He'll give you a glimpse there. He'll give you a dream here, a vision there. And he will bring it together for your understanding. Yeah, he do that. And you won't need nobody to come to come from come in and confirm nothing God done said. Like he told me years ago, why do you need somebody to confirm what I say to you? That took me out of every prayer line, says. I had to get out. Because he said, why do you need to have somebody to confirm what I say to you when I talk to you mouth to mouth? Why do you need that? And I said, oh, I really don't need that. I just need the faith to believe that I hear him, faith to believe that he's talking to me through me. I had to have faith to believe that. And when I hear him, 
I know how to humble myself to begin to listen attentively to what he's saying. So he doesn't expect us to know the way of his design plan of salvation, but he does expect us to surrender our all to him so that he can redo to restore all that was spiritually lost when Adam and Eve rebelled against him in the beginning. He does expect that. We learn and know that the heart of flesh of the spirit man is seated below in his soul called the subconscious mind. Our heart, the spiritual heart that God replaces is located in the soul. Not this one that's pumping blood for the body, but the one that is spiritual. Now again, the, mat the naturalness of man cannot combine these things, the spiritual part of this, to be able to understand how God does things. That's why I love it. I tell you, I love it. The more he lets me know, the more he reveals to me, the more I indulge it. And I'll be like, mm, 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 that's good. And nobody else might not want to know it, nor accept it. But guess what? I know something that somebody's rejecting. I know something that somebody else, like, that don't make no sense. Made a lot of sense to me when he said it. And it, it, and it fits. It fit right in me. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a, 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 a round hole, a round peg going into a round hole. The word of God and the revelations of God in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding has to fit in you. So that way you will understand that this is solely from God. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's like he puts us together as his puzzle piece when he's renewing us and restoring us. And whenever uh, such and such a day and time comes and he allows, he'll say, okay, I'm going to put that little piece right there in her now. So that way she'll better understand this now. And she'll know why it took her to come from this angle at that point in time. Why these things had to come against her. So I'm going to set this piece, this piece of completion there in her. Now she can understand. Now she can move on forward. You got so many people whining and going on. To, I don't know why God let this happen to me. Okay, okay. You need, you need to get out of salvation and go find something else to do it to you decide if you want to accept God's terms. Now see, we got flesh and we need to understand as long as you got this flesh heaving and breathing around you and talking to you and you saying you love God, know that there's a battle going on for your soul. So we learn and we know that the heart and flesh of the spirit man is seated below in his soul, called the subconscious mind. Now this is knowledge from the knowledge of good and true, not the knowledge of good and evil. See, that's what throws mankind again. They think the knowledge of good and evil is the knowledge of good and true. No, it's not. That's what caused Adam them to fail. <laughs> That's what caused Adam to no longer be overshadowed with the glory of God was the knowledge of good and evil. So the more man teaches man, he's teaching him the knowledge of good and evil. The more man does what he do and they give it to one another and we learn it, it's the knowledge of good and evil if the spirit of God is not in it. <clears throat> So this knowledge of good and truth must be heard by and in faith, not by your feelings, intellect, or your ability to be smart. It's not heard like that because the word of God cannot be treated like a natural school, not like you do natural information. And, and so therefore, we got a whole lot going. I'm telling you, it's a whole new transition. When you come into salvation, expect to be transitioned to be transformed, to become a new creature in Christ. Don't expect to be the same. Because if you expect to be any of the same, you need to check who called you. Because <laughs> the enemy, the enemy is subtle. He's shrewd. He will allow you to come as far as you know you've come in Christ and still go to tell you, you know, it's okay if you, you still remember to do this time and stuff like this. Depending on what it is you're talking about. And then you go to feeling stuff in, in your flesh, a little pumping of the flesh, and you go, yeah, you still feel good. Yeah, you need to check that stuff. 
Because that, that's not that's not spiritual, and it's not going to bring you into your spirituality. What it's designed to do is to set you back ten phases. It's designed to knock you back as far back in your past as it can. So we learn and know from the knowledge of good and, and truth that it is your will that controls your destiny, and the seat of the will is the conscious and subconscious mind. You have a two, two minds, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind that are located spiritually. And it's better to live out of the subconscious mind than it is the conscious mind. And how do we get there? Remember the conscious mind? You can hear a thought in your mind. If you don't entertain that thought, it, what, what does it do? It just passes on till another thought comes. And if you don't entertain that one, it just, you just think it all day long, but you don't never attach yourself or grab that one of those thoughts. But when you begin to repeat a process with those thoughts, whichever thought you choose, and you repeat the process over and over again, it downloads, now it gets into your subconscious mind, which is your heart. Now it becomes a part of you when it becomes repetition. That's how it gets in. As long as it's just passing through and you never entertain it, you're fine, you know. And that's just like work. That's why at work, when we're on a job, we have to pay attention and know what we need to do step by step in order to make sure that the employee is happy. Amen. So that way we do that. So you can't just discard those work thoughts. You've got to be able to grab a hold of them and perform them, manifest them, or whatever it is you need to do on that job. But if it's foolishness, you can discard that at any point in time so it don't reside in you, amen? Your will implies self-control. Your will lives in your heart. Your will is in the heart, not the blood pumping heart for the body, but the one for the soul. So see, the soul is a, is a person himself. It's you. That's who you really are. That's who I really am. We are souls. We are the spirit, and that's the spiritual part of us. The heart is your subconscious mind, and the subconscious mind is the seat of control for your life in all human beings. So whatever my makeup is, it's in my heart. Like I said earlier, if I'm nasty, it's in my heart. If I'm mean, it's in my heart. And even if I'm a believer and I'm still mean, that means I don't have a new heart. I don't have that new heart of flesh because I'm still mean. I'm still telling people, giving people a piece of my mind. <laughs> yeah, with my hands on my hips and my neck rolling. That's like the snake. That's how the serpent do. But the thing is, we have to understand. I'm serious, that you know how you do. You get in a discussion with him and watch what he do. <laughs> but the thing is, we have to understand our hearts have to become pure. We have to be, that's why, that's why Jesus portrayed the fruit of the Spirit. We have to get the fruit of the Spirit in our heart. You know, you can't be backing away from those things. You've got to have love, joy, peace. You got to have faith. You got to have all these things: goodness, gentleness, kindness. You got to have meekness. You got to have those things. Temperance. You cannot get past them, and they are in the new heart if you allow God to put it there. They're already there. Everything you need in that new heart comes equipped. You, it comes equipped with it. Now, yes, you're going to have to go through some processes to what? Manifest it, to reveal it. So that way you will know, oh, wow, this came in, in, in my life today as an issue or a circumstance, but joy stood up in me. Yeah, that's how you know that it's there. That's how you know it's working. It's activated by circumstances and situations and issues that the devil tries to cause in you. And what devil am I talking about? Your flesh. <laughs> Your flesh. People need to stop thinking that there's a separate devil walking around here. Your flesh is the evil one. Yeah, it's, I got it and you got it. The Bible says there's 17 works of the flesh. 
And so depending on where you come from in the past, whatever is working from that 17 words, then you, you're in trouble if it's still working. As a believer, you haven't given up. And you don't have that new heart. St. Matthew 12, 43 through 45 says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of man, he, that is the unclean spirit, walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Verse 44, St. Matthew 12, 43. Verse 44, Then he, the unclean spirit, said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Look at God. You come into this thing, he, he, he cleans you up. The word of God cleans you up. Verse 45 says, Then goeth he, the unclean spirit, and taketh him with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. There's a generation that's wicked, real wicked. That's these old young folks. They don't, they hard-headed. <laughs> but anyway, when we come into salvation, accept Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior and surrender our will over to the will of God. Our will must become God's will. Amen? And I know this may sound basic and elementary, but it's, it's needful in everything really that we say because sometimes people forget. I don't know how and why, but they do. Sometimes people forget. So, you must surrender your will over to the will of God to become his will. So that way it makes it easier for you to say, yes, Lord, whatever thy will is, not my will, but thy will will be done. Same as Jesus said. Jesus never did nothing of himself. Amen? Amen. Okay. So over to the will of God, the spirit of the word of God cleanses us from our sins, its rudiments, and that wicked and evil spirit that was keeping your soul in bondage has gone. So when the word comes, the word comes to clean house. A lot of us get so afraid when we see a difference in ourselves. And we get scared. We get fearful. And then we go to pushing back and wondering, well, how come I'm, how come I'm seeing clearly now? Duh. Yeah. How come I can hear better? Duh. How come I don't have thoughts racing across my mind like I used to? Duh. That, what, what's the purpose of the word? The word is to cleanse you. Jesus said, now you are clean. Clean through the word. It's the word that does it. The more you accept the word of God, the more it's going to come in to possess and control. Setting you up, getting your vessel ready for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I ask you this thing to get in there. He's not coming into a dirty vessel. He does not dwell in an unclean place. That's why I said, you know, on the outward appearance, you see all these ministries uh, doing all kinds of stuff and everything, and they say that's God. It's too much flesh in there for God to come up in there. He don't, he don't commune with flesh. He don't even talk to our flesh. Don't you hate your hand? Mm -hmm. So it is the spirit of the word of God that empties you from the rudiments, your fundamental principles or skills in your way of learning that you establish in the knowledge of good and evil. He comes to get rid of what you know. Remember I said here one time before, a while back, we have to be unlearned from what we know or what we think we know. You got to be unlearned from that old nature. Because, see, I think I, just because I know how to have a baby, you know, in the past and in the present, if I had none, and I'm not going to have another, but if I had another, that, that experience is going to be totally different. Every pregnancy is not the same. At least mine was. 
So therefore, it's not going to be the same when we. <laughs> it's not going to be the same when we become a new creature in Christ. You can't apply the old nature to the new. Jesus said it like this in, in, in the New Testament. You can't put new wine in old wine skins because it'll burst. Yeah. So you can't put a new spirit, the spirit of God, in that old nature because it's not, it's going to, it's probably going to go crazy. Probably would go crazy. I would, I would see it going crazy. Using everything. Just like those pigs were, when, when they, that spirit that was in those pigs. And they said, well, let us go over the, the, the over the cliff here. You know, I can imagine Jesus just saying, go. <laughs> but think about it. That's why I always tell you, God was not in our past. The Spirit of God was not in our past. No, he wasn't there. Now, his grace was there because he knew what your, his plans are for you. But the thing as far as him, him stopping you from doing stuff and stuff like that, no, he didn't do that. No. There were stumbling blocks, but you had to be able to know right from wrong what you were going to do. Yeah, until he drawed you, because he had to get you to a certain place in him to draw you into him where he know you will hear him. He know you will obey him. He know you will say, I know this is God. I know this has nothing to do with me. Okay, let me move on. Anywho, so, so when our vessel has been swept clean from sin debris, the evil spirits have a right. They have a right to come back. They do. And see, knock on your door. <laughs> Say, this is Mr. Temptation and Mr. Influence. Who? <laughs> you know, you got to start saying, who? <laughs> it's them say, oh, come on in. I, do I know? Uh -uh. Don't entertain that stuff. The word of God has cleaned you up. You on the road that called deliverance. But when you go to open the door to your past and it gives you his name, yeah, don't you remember me? I'm destruction. I'm desolation. I'm poverty. Yeah. You got you can't be opening up the door to that stuff. <laughs> I'm a new creature in Christ. You got the wrong address. You have the right to say that to that spirit. And that spirit is right there on you. Because, see, see, Satan has to come back. The demons have to come back to see, okay, I got to see if I can find myself. It's almost like a radar. It's a detector. It's detecting sin to see if it can see itself again like it did before you got clean and swept and garnished. And that's what we don't understand. Because, like I said, in the present, where as we are new creatures, everybody, the devil said this to me today. Uh-uh. 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 <laughs> if the devil talking to you, you need to know your flesh is still alive and well. The flesh is the devil's kingdom. I don't, you know, we might as well just face it. There is no separate devil nowhere. That's why he's not omniscient, I'm not present. He can't move around like God do. Because he's in people, in the flesh. That's his kingdom. Okay, let me finish up here. So we must practice, amen, until, learn and practice until it becomes habit, the will of God through the word, by seeking him diligently from our new heart to know what he knows about us and what he wants us to do daily on a daily routine. Because God does not come in you. He does not get in you. He does not save you and leave you stranded. And you sit around going, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. What do you want me to do? Well, over that, over that church, over there, they do a so and so. You want me to do that? No, no, no. First of all, he's going to tell you, you are the church. And <laughs> that building over there. But the thing is, is this. You've got to understand, we got to wait on God to get from God what God wants us to do. That's why so many people now today in salvation, everybody cutting hair. Everybody doing, everybody doing hair. Everybody doing nails. Everybody doing this. 
this. Everybody dressing this way. Everybody's doing the same thing. And of course, you know, everybody's doing the holy dance too. But the thing is, why? Because somebody didn't hear God. Somebody did. It might not be only one person in that whole arena that should be doing the holy dance. You know, apart from everybody else. But the thing is, we started and we liked it. We started, oh, that's easy. I could do that too. Yeah. Or oh, I could do hair too. Oh, anybody can do hair. You know, whatever profession is that somebody is really talented to do and has been ordained by God to do. You got many imitators out there. Because, see, they're not passion driven, they're dollar driven. Yeah. So therefore, like I said, even with business, they do the same thing with business. Some people start up a business every six months. And then six months later, it's, it's down again. And it's always some reason or some excuse, the reason it cannot, you know, perform and function and, and grow. Well, that might not be your calling. And see, if people, everybody wants to be able to copy and imitate. Nobody is listening for God for themselves is what I'm saying. To find out what you're good at doing. What it is that's going to glorify him. Not man, but him. And that's where the part is missing. We don't want to glorify God in all that we do. But see, that means your will has not been surrendered totally over to his will. Because see, I'm still leaving Christ out. I'm a part of me is saying, no, 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 this is for me. This is my blessing. Your blessing will never exclude Christ Jesus. Amen. If it do, that is not his. He didn't give you that. His blessings will never violate his word. If it does, he did not give you that. Are there any questions, any comments? But the devil does have the right to return, to tempt, influence, and try to enter back in. If you have not or do not and will not allow the Spirit of God to continue to progress you in him. You've got to continue the progression. Don't just stop and go, oh, I'm clean. I ain't got all these thoughts running in my mind. I'm free. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> you might need to move forward and give a little bit more because your freedom is not there just yet. That devil is going to come back. Even when God delivers us from anything and everything, the enemy always tries to come back. And as the, as the old saints used to always say, he's foolish and he's seen now. He doesn't remember anything. He doesn't remember that he tested you and tried you in that same area before. So what he does, he'll go away. When you resist him, when you resist him, he has to flee. Why? Because you submitted yourself to God, resisted the devil, and he flees. So therefore, he goes away for a season. And then but he'll come back with the same old stuff again. So not tradition and religion they, in daily routine. Don't watch tradition and religion. If you go, become a new creature in Christ, do it Christ Jesus' way. It's okay to watch the pastor. It's okay to, but even, if, even if, when you're watching the pastor, ask God what's your part. Don't want what the pastor has because you may not be able to go through what the pastor has gone through to get where the pastor is. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's why I say, because we all have our cross to bear. And everybody's cross is not the same, but the outcome is. The end results are. It's not from family and the buddy system of tradition and religion and how you feel. So, you know, your daily routine and your daily activities, it's not going to match somebody else. And if it do, it might match somebody in China. You never know. Amen. As a spirit encased in a body, having human experiences, living on the earth, you must learn through the knowledge of good and truth how to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of your flesh. And from what it is, what it is used to and familiar with. Your flesh, as it dies, it dies because the word of God is being accepted.
accept it more and more in your life every day. The flesh has to die. It cannot live. Lord, I got this back up here. Okay, so <laughs> many people have not accepted the word of God as they should accept it because their flesh is not dying. Okay, and as long as people are in, have been in salvation, you'd be surprised how active their flesh still is. I, I'm telling you, I, I be seeing this stuff when I talk, mm -hmm. and it, it just makes it, I have to back up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so the, 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 the word kills the flesh. The acceptance of the word and the belief in the word kills the flesh, kills your flesh. Not somebody, not yours, but mine. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're doing the same, it's going to kill yours. So therefore, the enemy has to die. The will of the enemy, the nature of the enemy in your flesh has to die. And like I said, but he's still going to say things. He's still going to try to influence you. And it's going to be through the weakest link that you are attached to. That weakest link that you are familiar with. That could be husband. That could be wife. That could be mother, father, children, co-workers. Sisters, <laughs> brothers, the weakest link. And depending on your faithfulness and your loyalty to them, that determines which route you go. You come that weak link. You're growing in the Lord. You're spiritually strong. You come that weak link. Snaps over because of their unbelief or their unrighteousness or something they want to particularly do that's going to cause you to compromise what you know. You got to watch that thing. Watch it. Because that's how the enemy gets back in. That's how he gets back in. Once you've been clean, swept, and garnished by the word of God. Amen. So without a body, the devil and his demons are illegal in the earth realm and must utilize the body to become legal and live on earth. The spirit of the devil, demons have to have a body to live in the earth realm because that's, that's the way God created earth for man. Everything in the earth realm has to have a body. That's why God don't come down here all really nearly and stuff because he needs a body to come in. Uh-oh. See? Here we go. Okay. I'm going to let let it go. Let it go. Woo! I'm trying to tell you I'm going to let it go inside. <laughs> shut my eyes or something. Like that. Yeah, hopefully it will. But anyway, <laughs> so out of all that commotion that's going on in these houses of prayer, God does not come in flesh. He has to have a body that is that has been condition for him. Yeah. He has to have a body that is fit and suited for him. A vessel that is, has been willing and following his command to come in the setting. And that, that's, that's not happening too many places, I don't believe. But anyway, okay, I'm going to go on. So we as born again believers, new creatures in Christ, must learn through the knowledge of good and truth to live without the memories familiarity, habits, practices, desires, and lust of our flesh so that we can walk as spirit beings. The Bible says walk in the flesh so you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And it says that if you live in the flesh, Romans 8, 13 says this, if you live after the flesh, you're going to die. You're going to die a death. <laughs> but if you... If you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. In order to mortify the deeds of the body, you've got to allow the Word of God to take its abode in you. Amen. Galatians 5.16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not. It says you shall not, not maybe. It says you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So your flesh has to die. Your flesh has to go to a pity party. And say, oh, you, uh, we're not friends no more. No. I'm a new creature. You don't exist. 
Why? Because the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these two are contrary. <laughs> they are against one another. Golly. <laughs> yeah, that too. I just see a whole lot of people jumping around hollering, Jesus, Jesus, yeah, no, that, all that craziness and stuff. Mm. Okay. Ooh. These two are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things spiritual that you need to do. Galatians 5, 17. You've got to be able to become the spirit being that you are. See, the beautiful part about it, Jesus set that example for us as a spirit being. You can do this thing and be in flesh without sin. Man don't want it that way, but you can walk in the spirit, crucify your flesh and its lust, practices, and habits. When you walk in the spirit, it kills your flesh. Yeah. So Satan, the devil, your adversary, must be able to see himself in you through your flesh. He has to find a region or an area where he wants walls. He's got to try. He's got to, what that word they use on Facebook, poke? Yeah. He's got to poke you to see what he can find of himself that's still there. Amen. And he's going to poke too. So your flesh is his kingdom of darkness, as we said in the beginning. And he's subtle, subtle. He has tactics. He's deceitful. And he's full of wiles. W I L E S. He's, he's just dirty. And I don't mean dirty from the, the, the dirt. I'm talking about dirty in mind, dirty in heart. Jesus condemned Satan's fleshly kingdom, its nature of sin, temptation, and influences. Romans 8 and 3 said so. Said, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. See, the law was good, but it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, for sin, and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Sister Mary, when I caught on to that line in there, that thing, he said, for sin, he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. But for sin and for sin, he condemned it. So that told me, oh, I truly am free. I don't have to be concerned about this thing because Jesus has already condemned flesh. All we got to do is walk in it. All we got to do is have faith in what he has already completed and do the same. And guess what? My flesh is condemned. And the sin that it carries is condemned. Y'all missed that one. God had to send to earth what man was familiar with, a human being with flesh and its weaknesses. God had to reenact the whole scene of man from the conception to the birth of a woman, through the birth of a woman, to his death because of man's rejection of truth, to burial and resurrection for mankind to see and know that he is God in sinful flesh, to reconcile mankind back to himself. The nature of the flesh, your flesh, is Sinful. It is the sinful nature of Satan. We might as well just face it, accept it, point it out to your own self that my flesh is sinful. And you little devil, I know you're trying your best to stay hid, but the word will find you. The word will find you. Everything that's in your heart that's not like God, the word finds it. Everything that's operating and working in your flesh, the word will find it. Amen? Amen. And it ain't nobody else's fault when the word pointed out. They say, ouch, thank you, Jesus. Help me to get over this thing, Lord. Show me a way out. And that's it. Amen. Are there any questions, any comments? Huh? What time is it? You ain't saying that. Just saying that you saying it. Amen. There's no comments, no questions. No. Amen. 
Father God, we thank and praise you again for another study that you've given us. Thank you, Lord God, for the word of God and wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Thank you, Lord God, for the revelation knowledge, oh God, to help us to see, oh God, more than a glimpse now, but to be able to see what you're doing and how you're doing things in us individually and corporately. And Lord, we just appreciate you. We love you. Oh God, and we say continue to let your will be done. Continue to move by your spirit in our lives. Continue, Lord God, to speak to our hearts that we may do, oh God, that which is good and perfect in your sight. Oh God, help us to regulate these things, oh God, and help us, oh God, that we will allow your spirit to do the work that you have already completed inside of us as you make it known to us. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen.